Hey everybody, Nuri Transformed here again, and today I decided to go ahead and do a two-pack, just to kind of make up for missing out on Thanksgiving week. Mm. Oh, sorry, excuse me. What you see before you is the Toys R Us exclusive Silver Knight Optimus and Grimlock two-pack. Now, if you don't know about these molds, these are basically molds, they took molds from other lines, like this is the Deluxe Class Optimus from the Dark of the Moon line, and this is the Voyager Class Grimlock from the Generations Fall of Cybertron line. I do not have the original Fall of Cybertron Grimlock, but I do own the Dark of the Moon Walmart exclusive version of this figure, which would have like gold paint on the front, red here, blue here. It was a very strange looking figure. And I do not have the original Dark of the Moon figure of this one. But yeah, these basically for some, it's much like how they did with the Grim, the um, kind of like the, what were they called? The Evolution Packs, where they had two Grimlocks, two Optimuses, two Bumblebees. Except that with those, at least we got one new mold in each of them. These, we just have two random toys just kind of thrown together. The Optimus kind of works because, well, he is, this is a movie Optimus, even if it's not the Age of Extinction one. But this Grimlock, uh, I think we just picked a good Grimlock and decided to throw him in there. At least it's not in our Energon Grimlock. Interestingly enough, this is not like the, um, there is a silver Grimlock out there from the Dinobots Unleashed pack that's actually the movie Grimlock. But this one's not silver, he's actually Grimlock done in his G1 colors. It's kind of like what they did in the Evolution Packs, where we had one that was kind of movie accurate, and then one that was just G1. And yeah, these are def and this is not the G1 cartoon colors, these are definitely the G1 toy colors. The original Grimlock toy had re this red, blue, green, and yellow primary color effect on his legs. Had these like chromed out clear plastic neck and chest. And same with his, uh, I guess you could say claws? Toenails? I don't know what you want to call those. So yeah, this is definitely based on the toy version, and as you can see, he has a lot more gray. The original Fall of Cybertron version had gold along the tail, and had like more of a bronze gold rather than this chrome gold. So it's actually an interesting idea, and I really like it. As for the Optimus, he actually is completely silver with little red flame effects all over. Well, there's also some blue back here, but that's mostly for robot mode. You can see they don't do the whole thing silver. As you can see, the back bumpers here are in gray, but I don't mind that too much. It Looks alright, and it plus has this blue here. I do like how the windows look. The only thing I really can complain about is I kind of wish it painted the um, rear view mirrors. Although that is kind of cool because these rear these are not just rear view mirrors, these are actually the pegs for when he transforms, where he's pegging to here. That's kind of cool that they actually do look like rear view mirrors. And I do like that the grill is actually nice and silver. Although it looks like it's a little bit sloppy because you can see kind of like a line going across where there's like extra paint. But it is a very nice look, and one thing I'm worried about is you can see up here it's kind of like rubbing away on the top. I don't know what's going on there, but considering this is a part that doesn't touch anything, it just sits here. So I don't know why it's all rubbed away like that, but it's a little worrying. I'm hoping this isn't about like just all peel off, or hopefully this does not have gold plastic syndrome, because I think this is all painted on. I don't think... Um, let's look on the inside. I really hope this is not just really shiny plastic or have gold plastic syndrome with this thing falling apart. They do come with three accessories. We have this sword, which I don't recognize from anything. It reminds me of the sword that the Energon Grimlock came with in the Evolution Pack, where it's just kind of a generic looking sword. It even has like a similar design going down the middle. And then we have this shield and this sword, which you may recognize as the Fall Cybertron Grimlock's sword and shield. With less paint, because the Fall Cybertron one actually had black all along the middle, while this one's just plain translucent red. All the sword did get painted. Which is nice. Or, well, I don't think it's painted. I think it's just got black plastic with clear plastic, but still, at least it's two different colors. However, the, the pictures from what I've seen only show the Grimlock with the sword while the Optimus is using the shield. And if you wish to store them, the Grimlock sword has two pegs on either side. It can peg into his leg. <sighs> there we go. And, of course, the Optimus has the shield and the sword, which you can either peg on top. Or the sword does kind of, not really lock in place, but it does kind of just sit there. You can either put the shield on top or just kind of have it sing against the sword. And there you go. Which doesn't look too bad. Now this Grimlock actually does have some gimmicks. If you look right here, you have this little switch right behind his head, which opens up his mouth. So you can get some chompy chompy action, which... Eh, nothing paints on the inside, but it's alright. Also, I did do all this lining here. These black lines all over him are not normally there. I like the mechanical detail of it all. However, you pull it all the way back, 
you get a light up, light up gimmick. And it doesn't just light up his mouth for fire effect, it also lights up his eyes and the top of his head and his nose. They kind of give this energized... Oh, his arm popped off. Kind of give this energized, firing up look like... Blah! But it's, the problem is it's so strong and the plastic's so thin and light, you can kind of see it through the plastic anyway. Which is a bit strange looking, but I don't mind it too much. It kind of, especially here, it looks kind of cool. Blah! Blah! No paint on the teeth, but they are all molded individually. The only real paint is the gold pla- is this- well, there's not even paint on this. This is actually just gold plastic, I think. The only real paint's on the tail. So, that kind of sucks, but could be worse. I think the fists are actually painted, which is weird because these fists down here are separate pieces of plastic. They could have just simply molded it in black plastic, but they didn't. They made it the same gray plastic as the reds and painted it over for no reason. Also, this Grimlock doesn't have the best articulation. The tail doesn't move at all. The head doesn't move, like, it moves up and down a little bit, but not much. You can see it just falls back in the place from gravity. His arms are ball-jointed, ball so you can get some movement, but they'll pop off easily. And you can't move the fingers and the elbow, even though there's hinges. Kind of look like there is, but nope, just the ball joint at the arm. Plus, there's not much you can really do with it there. And rawr, my arm falls off. Rawr, I'm crippled now. And due to how he transform, his legs are kind of just pegged in here. You can pull them out, but then it just kind of looks awkward. He doesn't look quite right. He's a very skinny, very hollow Grimlock. So the main articulation while he's in dino mode is you can swivel his legs, you can bend or unbend his knees, and you can move his toes. So not much articulation for a, a dino, which kind of stinks. And the Optimus rolls all right. So, pretty good looks to them, but not much playability in this mode, in these modes. For comparison, here they are next to Slog, the Age of Extinction Slog, who appears bigger as a Voyager, but it's just because he's a lot bulkier. Uh, let's see, how about the Age of Extinction Hotshot, or Tracks, whichever you would prefer to call them. The Dark of the Moon, Autobot Ratchet. And why not? The Fensor. Towers over everything. I'm going to go ahead and hop into Optimus' transformation. To transform him, we're going to grab the front, I'm not sure what you would call this piece, I guess the front bumper engine, and it's going to pull out and it's going to pop into the spot where it's not going to move. Well, it's going to move this way, but it's not going to slide back. It'll pop like this and stay like this if you pull it fully extended. Then this whole piece right here, we're going to pull these pieces apart, and you can see they're actually pegged into the bottom of this part here. And when you pull them down, you can pull them like, that, like this on these ball joints, but you can also just grab this whole thing here, and it'll peg in there, and now it'll start to form his legs. Then you're going to take these pieces, fold them up, they'll peg in, swivel them around to give him his feet, pop them apart, then you're going to pull them from the hip, and they were pegged, these pieces were pegged into the hip. And they'll come down these double hinges. And then on the inside right here, you can actually see there's a peg in a hole here. And you can peg the leg together. Then flip this wheel in to give them a nice flat foot. We'll repeat over here. Unpeg from there. Come down the double hinges. Squeeze it together to peg it in. And flip the wheel in. Next, you're going to come back here. Split these two, and then you're also going to split the top, and these will form the arms. These will flip around, and like I mentioned earlier, the, the rear view mirror, or the side mirrors, will actually be pegs to peg these in place to peg the arms right there. Then this whole piece, if you position it just right, flips around, you got to squeeze it past this piece. Alright, now the arms, there's nothing holding them to get there, you just kind of unbend them. These pieces right here can act as either as shoulder blades or you can kind of just have them pointing straight up like this. Now the interesting thing is there is an automorph gimmick inside here. His head will pop out when you pull the chest open. How it works is there's this little switch here and what you do is you take this and when you press it to here it pushes down that switch. Then you can grab this and pull it apart and you can see when you pull it apart the head automatically pops out when that switch is pushed. And there you have the um, Silver Knight Optimus. 
All right. I looked into it. This is apparently G1 Rampage's sword. That is completely random. So, that's weird. So, yeah, sorry about the jump cut. Um, apparently, also, these are like vacuumized metal vacuum metalized silver. So, that might explain why it looks a bit weird here. It might be rusting or something. I don't know. Or it might just be wearing off. Some of the paint's not done too well. For as little paint these two figures have, it's not on there very well. Like, the red on the arms kind of just disappears at the edge. Which you're not going to see it too often, but it does look very lazy, especially since there's different amounts. And like, you can see his middle chest piece here. There's very little blue on it. You can see it barely covers everything, and it doesn't cover the sides of all those little details in there. And everything else is basically just plastic. The only thing that's really well painted is the head. Which I'll give them very nicely painted. I like his beaming little angry looking eyes there. He's got like a very G1 style face of just simply blue and silver and then the eyes. So it's a very nice little head sculpt for the movie. And it's not the one that has the mouth. It has the mouth plate so there's no mouth to look at which is a little creepy looking. The interesting thing about these two, thing about these two figures though which is what I like. You can actually have them ride Grimlock. What you're going to do is just give him a basic little sitting position. You're going to want to sit him like right on this gray part, basically. And the, this kibble on his back will actually rest back here to kind of help him keep balance. And you can actually get him riding on Grimlock. Which is very nice, actually, considering these are two figures from two separate lines. Yet you can pull the whole Age of Extinction thing of Optimus Prime riding Grimlock. And then, of course, you can give him the weapons... And it doesn't look too bad. Grimlock does look a little small. Grimlock's supposed to be humongous, so... But it still works pretty well. Just for comparison... Eh, it comes up about to the waist. Now, for Grimlock's transformation... You're gonna come back here and pull on his heels, and when you do, it'll flip out his fists then these actually can collapse in to kind of make more of an arm look. Same on this side, pull out the heel and it'll hinge the fist out, then this will collapse to make an arm. Then of course straighten out the legs to make his arm straight. Like I said, mentioned earlier, unpeg, and this will come out on a double on a hinge. We can straighten this out. Then this whole black piece down here that's for the arm will pu push out to give him a nice arm. Same on this side, unpeg. This is all like ratcheted too. Not this inside part, but the arm is ratcheted. Which is really nice. And it's ratchet going forward. Oh, this ratchet messed up. You can see this arm is very, very loose. That's because if you actually look down in here, it's hard to show you. Let me find the exact. Yeah, there's this little clip in there. And the clip for the ratchet pushed out, where the ratchet's not strong anymore. Also, this, this tail right here is another one of those cases where it's a very tight piece. So, once again, what I do is take my handy dandy nail scissors, push it in there, and you can see when you can, you can move it back and forth to loosen up that peg a bit. That's a very tight peg, but now you can see, yeah, that peg's almost undone now. So, you're going to pull it apart, and these pieces are actually wedged into these two little pieces in this crotch here. They kind of lock the tail together. So, what you're going to do now is grab the yellow and black pieces to pull them out for feet. Then once again, the whole double hinge thing, but except instead of going sideways like Optimus, it'll go from top to bottom like this on these double hinges. And then inside, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this, but there's a peg on the inside of the shell there that pegs into this little grayish white bit. And now I'll peg his feet together to where they'll hold like this, and you can see the end of the tails are now inside the feet. Or inside the legs. So now you can start seeing, oh, well there's some of the paint. Here's some of the paint that we didn't get in the in the dino mode. Now all that's left is grab the whole front of the dino mode, it'll unpeg, and there's Grimlock's head. What you're going to do is fold this head in to itself, into this little body part here. And then the head itself will actually fit in here like this. And you can do whatever you want with your arms, I just kind of have them sing down, but you can also flare them out like this if you want to get more of like the G1 style look. And there you have the Grimlock. Oh yeah, and there's the battery pack if you wanted to see that. And let's get Optimus standing. Optimus Prime. 
Definitely smaller than Grimlock, and that's actually about appropriate size for Optimus next to Grimlock, at least in the G1 style. Alright, let's go ahead and get the comparisons out of the way. Darker to Moon Autobot Ratchet, who's a bit shorter than Optimus Prime here, but bulkier than him. And if we're going to talk about bulkiness, bro, giant Defensor. Who Grimlock comes up to about his waist, Optimus a bit past his knees, about halfway up his hip by the look of it. And just for our comparison with an Optimus, Combiner or, or Optimus, who I'm probably going to get rid of because I don't like him as much anymore. Let's get out of here. I don't like you. Get you out of the way. Let's go ahead and cover our articulation. Optimus being a deluxe, he has a swivel at the head and he can't move much because of all the armored stuff around him. He's got a ball joint at each shoulder. And some of them work better than others, plus the detosh gets in the way of his arms working properly. So they can't go outward very far, but they do pull a full 360 all the way around. Swivel, and because of the trick, oh, and there goes his arm. That's the ball joint for you. Swivel, and because of how the arm transform, you do get a double hinged elbow, so you can really collapse his arm in with that elbow. Um, nothing, he does technically have least articulation, but the kibble moves with it, so you can only move it a little bit. And it can mess with the kibble and make him unbalanced. So it is usable, but only very small amount. So the, uh, the legs are ball jointed and they work a bit better than the arms. You can get them going outward, but they're very stiff and they start kind of pushing against this waist piece here. But you can get a pretty wide stance going. A bit further than what the arms could do. Once again, swivel and it's very tight. I don't think I can do a full 360 with it. Well, no, you can do it. It's just very tight. And a single knee, but it goes slightly past 90 degrees, so it's a fairly good knee. And the ankles, you could pop them forward like this if you want to. Not going to do much. Well, because of the transform, they can swivel outward like this. Which, because of how the plastic is, you can see it's going to start having corner problems. But you could potentially get him standing in a wider stance with his feet still flat on the ground. Which is pretty nice. You can get this kind of thing going. And he'll balance for the most part. So yeah, that's pretty good. I tend to just leave them like this. Because as it is, his feet are sitting on this flat piece here. And then there's this one line in the middle. Because the wheels don't touch the ground. As for Grimlock, his head's on a ball joint. But it's kind of the reverse of what you think it would. No, well, it's on a ball joint. But it's really weird because it's buried in there. So all it can, it can look up and down slightly. But all it can really do is move back and forth. And may I say, this is a gorgeous Grimlock head sculpt. I love that head sculpt. Ratchet it outward. Ratchet going forward and back. A uh, warning the ratchets can break, apparently. Stiff swivel at the arm and a softer ratchet for the elbow. Although if you look at it, you can actually see like as if the plastic's wearing away because you can see some of the gray plastic on the black there. And the hit end can swivel. Which is actually pretty nice since it's not needed for transformation. Nothing at the waist. Um, there are two hinges for the um, legs, so you can get the legs going out this far. And you can get them going forward and back on this ratchet, which is a very tough ratchet. Swivel, not as strong. It's still a good swivel, but not as tough as this swivel. And you do get a 90 degree knee. Nothing at the feet, but they're kind of just shells. So, but they are they are uh, molded to stand with a slightly wide stance, so you can get them going like this. Rrr. 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 All right, let's give Grimlock a sword. You can either put it in his hand, or he has his peg on his arm, where you can actually peg it in, give him like uh, a sword arm. Not a Grimlock thing, but it could work. I'm going to just give him the sword. Give him the sword. I'm just going off what I see from the pictures. Like I said, in the pictures I always see Optimus with the shield, which kind of works because he also has this pig in his arm, which means he could have the sidearm sword thing. And he can put the shield inside it, because this shield requires you to use a side pig because of how the pig is. So, you can give him the sword in that arm, or the shield in that arm, then give him the sword. And that's as far as down the sword goes. Even if you get rid of this piece, the sword's just molded with how thick the handle is. That it can only go that far down in his hand. So even if you got rid of the kibble, the sword would not go any further in his hand. 
But that's how they both look. They look both look pretty good. I'm going to give you another look at their detail. You can see the gas cans are molded in. I do like all this leg detail. I and it kind of lets me, makes me let go of how you can see it in the vehicle mode because it can look like vehicle wiring, or here it can just look like the robot mechanics. Even though it's not painted well, I do like a little detail on the chest. I do like the detail on the arms. There's all this really nice detail buried under his arm here that's really nice. And even in the inside of the kibble piece there, there's some details that are just buried in there, but they are details. They aren't part of the molding on the top or anything. So they're just there to give them a nice like back detail, I guess you could say. Even on here you see little bits here where it's buried under everything else usually. Which is pretty nice that it's got details and spots you normally wouldn't get, like here on the back of his hips. His knees also and legs are also really nice. So, not the best Optimus out there, but a lot of nice details and with the shield and sword, he'll probably do for your collection. I kind of want to get the other version of the Dark of the Moon one now. As for Grimlock, I love this Grimlock. Now, I hate that the ratchet broke on this one. I wish he had more articulation. But the molding, oh my god, this is a classic Grimlock for me. He goes on my classic shelf because I use this as my classic Grimlock. Like I mentioned, that head sculpt is a gorgeous head sculpt for Grimlock. Plus, I love all this detail in his chest. And him being in G1 colors also helps for him being my, my classic shelves. But you can see these nice little like light up abs with all this detail going through the middle. Nice Autobot symbol right here. Chest detail, there's even a little red light down here. Chest details all the way around. Nice, wide, big, powerful looking Grimlock. He's got these big boulders of arms just with all this nice detail. And he just looks like he could crush something with his fist. He also has all those details for his fingers. I like the red here. A little bit of venting and little wiring looks to it. All along here you get little details. Along the sides here, on the front here you got all this nice little details. Even on the sides here. Not as heavy as Optimus, but then again, he's not a movie toy. Movie, toy, movie toys usually get the most detail. I do want to get the bigger set of like sword and shield that third parties are making have made for the Fall Cybertron Grimlock to give to him. Because he definitely needs a bigger sword. And he definitely needs a bigger shield because... The shield's good on Optimus, but on Grimlock it looks really small. I can go ahead and show you that. Optimus stand. That's a good thing. Grimlock, his feet are shells, but because of the nice wide line of shell they are, he does hold a stance much better than Optimus there. You can see, yeah, Grimlock can also use the shield, but it's really tiny. I know this was an issue with the original Fall Cybertron and Grimlock as well, but still wish he got a bigger sword and bigger shield. Or at least a bigger shield. I think you can make do with this sword as like a one-handed sword. But he definitely needs a bigger shield. Also, the light-up gimmick still works here. Because, instead of just lighting up the head, since the head's inserted into his chest, we get glowing chest. He has, he not only does he have light piping, which you can see right there, his eyes, his visor glows, but you get chest piping. And he actually has electronics for it. So these little circles here glow, you can get the outer little red things glowing. I love that the Autobot symbol glows nice and red there, or the outline around it glows. So yeah, his chest lights up and it just looks really cool, especially if we were in darkness. Hold on. I can get better going if I close the window, or close the blinds. Let's see. Yes, there we go. It's gorgeous. So that's the Silver Knight Age of Extinction 2 pack. You can get the Optimus by himself, I believe, as just a deluxe from Toys R Us at the time, and you can probably find him online. But the only way to get the Grimlock was in the two-pack. I'm sure somebody's probably selling him by himself on eBay somewhere. But your best bet is just to buy the two-pack if you want the Grimlock, and then sell the Optimus if you don't want him. Would I recommend the, the, uh, would I recommend this set? Yeah, if you only have to, I would say if it's about 40 bucks or so, it's probably worth your money. 40, 50 bucks is definitely worth this set, because they do have some very nice looks. I do worry that this stuff, whatever this is, whether it's plastic or paint, will eventually chip off. But it's been holding up alright for the past year. So I'm not as worried about it. And this is just a gorgeous look for the Fall Cybertron Grimlock in its G1 colors. And if you wanted to go through all the deep things of customizing it yourself, this is a really good bet. The only thing I would say is just get a narrow shield for him. So yeah, this is a good set. Much better than the Evolution sets in my opinion. Well, don't get me wrong, the Bumblebee one was pretty good, the Grimlock one just sucked. And this set's actually... Unlike the two Bumblebee sets, there's no loose joints on Ironies, really. I think this ball joint here was originally a little loose and I had to put some glue in. 
and the arm, the um, the ratchet here broke on him a little bit, but I think that could happen with any of the ratchets on any of the versions of Fall Cybertron Grimlock. So that's more of just a problem with how it was built rather than a problem with the set, I think. But yeah, good set. I'd say he's worth your, they're, they're worth your money and your time if you like the movie line or if you just want like a G1 classic style Grimlock. So, I'm Nerdy Transform. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you enjoyed these figures. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.